Good morning, friends, and welcome to Friday, August 28th. Thanks to Hattie Broadbeck for getting us started. from the Upper Room Disciplines by Ann Broilis. And our scripture this morning is Romans 12, 9 to 21. <clears throat> Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit and serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope and be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another and do not be haughty but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are, and do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No. If your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So what does love look like? Television commercials and magazines show starry-eyed love between romantic partners, sweet and cuddly love between parents and children, and I've got your back love between friends. If only love were as simple and as uncomplicated as these images. In reality, whether it's connecting groups or individuals, love can be hard work. In the preceding verses, Paul reminds his listeners that we are one in Christ. And today's verses de detail how we live out our connectedness. It starts when we love from the center of who we are. Paul's words to the faithful in Rome are specific. He offers no just be nice platitudes, but rather a series of exhortations that apply today as much as they did thousands of years ago. Ultimately, we love because God first loved us. Although some of Paul's ideas echo Jesus' teachings, he very specifically lists behaviors to show how genuine love. Read these verses slowly and pause after each suggestion. Which of these feel easy? Which ones do you need to still work on? Think of specific persons or situations that fit. You might also name individuals who you know or know of you who are exemplified genuine love or perseverance in prayer. It may be someone famous like Nelson Mandela or Dorothy Day or Malala Yusuf. 
It may be an honored elder in your congregation or a young adult whose work with the church youth inspires you to deeper love. But as you read, listen for that place deep within where God nudges you. Does one of Paul's admonitions jump out at you? Perhaps you have had a falling out with a friend or your faith community is experiencing division. One of these verses might be a fitting prayer of focus as you work through conflict by loving from the center of who you are. Let us pray. O God of love, may our love be genuine so that we serve you in all things. In your name we pray. Amen. Now thanks to Harold Durfee, we're going to close with the gift of love, verse 1. because God first loved us. Praise be God.